Good morning, Oak Grove. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Mandy Midget, and I am our children's minister, and I am our preschool director here at Oak Grove. In just a second, we're going to say our breakthrough prayer, and I'm sure that all of you have seen um, on the tables that we have right here um, vases. Our children at Oak Grove planted that seed paper that we were given at Easter inside there. And I also wanted to share with you an exciting breakthrough that has happened. So on Easter Sunday, I've been the minister here for three years, and we had the most children that we have had in three years checked into our children's wing. So that is so exciting. <laughs> And as we continue to pray our breakthrough prayer together, let's join together today and say it. Dear God, fill us with your wisdom and courage as we seek your will for Oak Grove UMC. Empower us to follow you in serving our families, our church, our community, and our world. Help us to be aware of what you are trying to do with us and through us so that we may grow in your kingdom. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. I'll be reading from the New International Version. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you so much for such a wonderful children's time today, Pastor Amanda. Our children are truly such a blessing, and uh, what a joy it is that I get to, to work with um, them each day here at Oak Grove. Um, Pastor Amanda and I, we had connected um, a few months ago about today's sermon. And as we are settling into worship, I am so excited to share my testimony with all of you. I grew up in the small town of Pocosin, Virginia. And in 1995, I walked down the hallways into kindergarten at my classroom at Bacosan Primary for the very first time. Miss Marsha was my kindergarten teacher, and she was very kind, and she was a spunky woman. And her booming laughter could be heard down the hallways most school days. Her vibrant classroom was a place where I always felt loved and cared for. And if you knew her, you knew how much she truly cared about her students. My mother, who um, now this is her 41st year of teaching, but she um, taught in the kindergarten classroom directly next to mine. And being the shy, introverted child that I was, she was so worried that I was going to wander in her classroom during the day and try to say hello but it was actually the opposite. <laughs> Being the rule follower that I am, I was worried that she was trying to say hello to me while I was at school. I mean, we're not supposed to talk in the hallways, right? 
And uh, I, I was like, Mom, come on. We know the expectations, right? <laughs> but 14 years later, I got to walk down those very hallways as a student teacher myself, working on my graduate degree in education. So that's a picture of my mom. It's a recent picture, um, and, and she still is a teacher today. And um, I, I think a lot of my gifts and stuff come from my mom and what she has taught me. When my daughter walked down the hallways for the first time on her way to kindergarten, it was here at Oak Grove. The moment that we entered the doors here, it was a place where every teacher here made us feel loved and connected and welcomed. And it really is a feeling beyond what words can describe. And it's something I continue to feel every single day when I'm here at work. Being a teacher is a very rewarding profession. You help teach these important lessons to the next generation and those who are the future, uh, police officers, lawyers, teachers, ministers. Most of us have stories on how we have been impacted by the teachers in our lives and who have helped teach us important lessons that have shaped who we are today. So this is a, um, a picture of our, our teaching staff here at Oak Grove. So that's all of us too that teach at Oak Grove preschool and kindergarten. Being a teacher is also staying awake at night and trying to figure out how to reach every single one of your students. And sometimes it's not sleeping at all because even when you have given it all, your support and your guidance, it just feels like you fell short. And you'll continue to do anything to make a positive impact in their lives. Teachers are often our first heroes. They give us the tools to read and write and do math. They introduce us to the basics, history, science. They stand up for us when we're bullied they encourage us when we feel the sting of failure and open our imaginations to bigger and brighter worlds. Teaching really is a great responsibility, but it's also a spiritual calling. And among the mentors and teachers and students that have all shaped my life along the way, Jesus has been my savior my friend, and the ultimate teacher. I gave my life to Christ when I was 12 years old, and I was baptized and confirmed in the Episcopal Church. And during the, the global COVID-19 pandemic, my home church was shut down and worship ceased. Oak Grove had daily devotions that were virtual each day. And my family, we found ourselves listening to these devotions, and I began studying the Bible more than I ever had in my life. It was because of this virtual ministry that my husband and I knew this was our home church and that we were being called to serve here at Oak Grove. The very first time I ever attended in-person worship um, I was so shy, I sat in the very back pew. <laughs> and Carol Kaczynski approached our family. And she spoke to us just for a few minutes. Um, her warm smile and just welcoming words, it truly made such a lasting impact on our lives. And over the past year, <laughs> I have been discerning how Jesus has been teaching me so many important lessons. And one very valuable lesson that I have learned is discerning his own will for my life rather than my own. I became a member of this church in 2021 and Oak Grove has offered guidance, wisdom, support, and opportunities to share about my faith as well as encouragement to step out of my comfort zone, away from that back pew, 
and to take more active roles within our church community. But from leading prayers to serving in different ways at our church and our school, I have found indescribable fulfillment in serving God in these ways. And now, just a little over three years later, there's a lot that I've learned during this incredible journey. In March of 2023, I began feeling a very distinct call to ordained ministry and an urgency to share about Christ with others. And for someone like me, most comfortable sitting in the back pew at church, terrified of public speaking, it suddenly came like calm and white noise. Sharing about Christ became an all-absorbing desire. And next year, I will continue leading as the director over our school and the director over children's ministry. But I have been accepted, and I will begin my journey in seminary school this fall at Wesley Theological. Today, I have shared my own testimony because when we truly submit to God's will rather than our own, we can find true freedom. And through the perfect teacher and example, Jesus, we can step into action where we are today to make a difference with love and humility and servanthood. Last week, Pastor Amanda introduced the new Eastertide worship sermon series, Freeing Jesus, based on the book written by Diana Butler Bass. This book invites readers to consider a life where Jesus grows with us and helps us through life challenges and distinct roles that we see in Scripture. And as discussed in the sermon last week, it invites us to look at Jesus beyond a one-dimensional understanding and calls us to consider a life where Jesus grows with us through those life challenges. This book encourages readers to re-examine preconceived notions of Jesus and to embrace a more inclusive and vast view of his message and teachings. All Christians have a story, some story of Jesus and who Jesus is to you. And that's the frame of what this book is. And as we go through our lives, we are writing a story of Jesus. And today, as I have shared my own testimony, I invite you to think of your own story. Today, our focus is Jesus as our teacher. Out of the 90 times that Jesus is addressed in the Gospels, 60 of those times, he is referred to as teacher. And the only biblical story that we have of Jesus in his childhood is one where he is teaching at 12 years old. Jesus did not teach an ethics of love to follow, but he embodied the love he spoke of in his stories, in his sermons. Jesus, who was complete love, taught us to go and be likewise. In today's gospel reading, Jesus states, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for this is what I am. And now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash each other's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. In chapter 12 of the Gospel of John, we see a transition in Jesus's ministry. He, um, in the, uh, the chapter 12, we see the public ministry move into a more private setting where he is speaking with the disciples. And while chapters 1 through 12 cover 
three full years of Jesus and his public ministry, the next seven chapters cover just 24 to 36 hours. And in John 13, 12 through 15, we see Jesus demonstrating the ultimate act of servanthood by washing his disciples' feet. This humble act serves as a powerful example for us to follow in our own lives. The practice of foot washing was originally an act of hospitality in homes, and it was performed for guests by a servant. And Jesus shows this act of love for his disciples in the upper room during the Last Supper. Jesus took on the role of a servant without hesitation. He didn't just talk about serving others. He actively demonstrated it through his actions. Jesus went one by one with the basin and knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples. In that same way, we are called to put our faith into action and to serve those that are around us. Jesus' act of servanthood was rooted in pure love because he embodied it. His love for his disciples compelled him to serve selfishly. Jesus, who is complete love, taught us to go and be likewise. As followers of Christ, we are called to love one another as he has loved us. And this is seen by the type of teacher that Jesus was, a sage, a teacher of wisdom, a teacher of transformation. And when we think of the reading this week, we can find value in knowing that as we grow and our stories transform in life, Jesus is there during that growth, and he is the embodiment of love. Not only do we have this incredible gift of Jesus, our teacher, but we have the responsibility of practicing humility, service, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. As I was reflecting on the topic this week, it reminded of our breakthrough prayer that we prayed just a little while ago and that we've been doing each day here at Oak Grove UMC. So this week, as we go out into the world, I invite you to remember that God can empower us to follow him as we serve our families, our church, our community, and our world with that same love, humility, and service that Christ has taught us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we reflect on the powerful message of John, and the example you set for us through the act of washing your disciples' feet. May we be inspired to serve others with humility and love and help us to embody the spirit of selfless service and to always put the needs of others before your own. Bless us with the strength and wisdom to follow in your footsteps, spreading love and joy throughout our congregation and beyond. And may your grace guide us in all that we do, now and forever. Amen.